welcome back to Four Together. Thanks so much for listening. On this podcast, I'm reading the 2019 platform of the Green Party of Canada and sharing it as nine easy to listen to episodes. I hope this podcast makes learning about our platform simple and easy. Our platform is a clear vision for Canada and full of so many great ideas that I can't wait to share. Not everyone likes reading long documents and not everyone can find the time to read something this long. And that's exactly why I'm doing this. We're also committed to being inclusive in how we share our platform, and we want to make our platform accessible to as many Canadians as possible. The idea of this podcast is to give you an audiobook of the Green Party platform, so you can learn what the Green Party is all about while you're on your way to work or out for a run or whatever you love to do while you listen to podcasts. Now, to get the platform yourself, just go to greenparty.ca slash platform. And to look up who your local Green Party candidate is, you can go to greenparty.ca slash candidates and just put in your postal code. However you're listening, welcome, and we'd love to hear from you. So you can email us at platformpodcast2019 at gmail.com. If you have any platform questions or feedback, we'd love to hear from you. We'll read everything that you send and do our best to reply as well. We're hoping to be able to share some of the questions and feedback as well. So if you'd prefer we don't share your comments, please mention that in your message. Okay, let's get started with episode six. In this episode, we're going to cover the green vision for invoking ecological wisdom. Invoking Ecological Wisdom Ecological wisdom, a Green Party core value, means understanding that humans and every other species of animal and plant are integral and interdependent parts of a living planet. When we degrade the Earth or any part of it, we undermine the integrity and viability of all life, including our own. Our duty, then, is to live on Earth with the lightest touch possible. As we draw on Earth systems to meet our basic needs and enjoy a high quality of life, we should not do irreparable harm to those systems or to other species. This is an ethical issue as well as a practical one. As part of a global community, our duty is to all life, not just our own. Sadly, industrialization and consumerism since the mid-20th century have already done irreparable harm. Climate change and mass species extinctions are global proof of this. Soil erosion, water and air pollution, deforestation, the waste crisis, and environmental illness are evident at regional and local levels. Much has been lost, but there is much left to save. Governments have a duty to regulate business practices, commercial products, and behaviors to dramatically reduce the curtain burden on ecosystems species and people who are at risk of being trampled on the path of so-called progress. Reducing Ecological and Health Risks This part of the platform is labeled with three sustainable development goals. Good health and well-being, clean water and sanitation, decent work and economic growth. Hundreds of thousands of chemicals are in commercial use. Only a handful have undergone independent scrutiny of their toxic effects on humans and ecosystems. Tragically, we only discover after long exposure that some are unsafe and by then the damage has been done. The regulatory system is always playing catch-up. Pollution and toxic chemicals pose serious health threats such as cancer, asthma, learning disabilities and other chronic diseases with marginalized populations often at greatest risk. The health impacts of exposure to toxic substances are estimated to cost our healthcare system tens of billions of dollars annually. A green government will pass legislation to give Canadians the right to a healthy environment, promoting greater transparency in decision-making, public participation rights, and access to judicial review mechanisms set targets for reducing the use of pesticides in agriculture 
through programs to assist farmers in moving to organic and regenerative farming. Strengthen the Canadian Environmental Protection Act, CEPA, to limit the approval and use of toxic chemicals that affect our health and environment. Regulate microfibers as a toxic substance under CEPA. Invoke the precautionary principle in making decisions about approvals of products, substances, projects and processes where there is the potential for irreversible harm. If there is no scientific proof of safety, then approval will be withheld. Revive and expand the National Pesticides Monitoring and Surveillance Network. Create an adverse effects reporting database for doctors and emergency rooms to keep track of health impacts of pesticides and other chemicals. Ban neonicotinoid pesticides which kill bees and other pollinators and support farmers in shifting to alternatives. Ban all forestry and cosmetic uses of glycophosphate-based herbicides as well as their use as a pre-harvest desiccant. Ban all toxic ingredients in personal care products. In collaboration with provinces, territories, municipal slash local governments and indigenous peoples, develop a national water strategy to ensure safe drinking water for all Canadians. Moving towards zero waste. Set national targets to reduce the production of solid waste and work with provincial, territorial, and Indigenous governments to achieve those targets. Implement an extended producer responsibility program to hold manufacturers financially responsible for the waste associated with the production, distribution, packaging, and end of life of their products. Require an increasing percentage of recycled plastic feedstock in durable plastic products. Require all products to be fully recyclable using readily available processes. Phase out Canada's export of solid waste to other countries. If we produce it, we should manage it. A National Plastic Waste Strategy Plastics are the fastest growing component of the solid waste stream. Dalhousie University scientist Dr. Boris Worm says that close to 90% of seabirds have plastic in their guts. Production has increased from 2 million tons annually in 1950 to more than 300 million tons today. It is estimated that 80% of all the plastic that has ever been produced, 8.3 billion tons, is still around in landfills or in the environment. The problem of plastic pollution has now become so acute that the public is demanding that governments take action. A green government will work with provinces, territories, and indigenous governments to develop and legislate a comprehensive national strategy on plastic pollution to be implemented over 10 years. In the meantime, establish a plastics life cycle advisory group, compromising representatives from all sectors in the life cycle of plastic products, scientists in federal and provincial government representatives to provide guidance and recommendations in establishing plastics biodegradability, recyclability, and sustainability standards. Adopt a precautionary approach to limit the production and use of persistent contaminants in plastic based on evolving research into the health, human health impacts of microfibers and other microplastics. In consultation with food distributors and sellers, set 2022 reusable and refillable packaging targets for supermarkets and other stores. By January 2022, ban the production, distribution, and sale of all unnecessary or non-essential petroleum-based single-use plastics, including carry-out and produce bags, balloons, straws, plates, cups, lids, cutlery, cotton buds, drink stirrers, cigarette filters, and plastic water bottles, which are less than 4 liters. Packaging, including multi-layer packaging, packaging straps, all multi-pack rings, takeaway packaging, and all expanded polystyrene styrofoam packaging, and all single-use plastics that are not easily recyclable or have additives that make them non-recyclable, including thermoset plastics. Extend the ban on microbeads to include household and industrial cleaning products. By 2021, require all new washing machines sold in Canada to have a removable, cleanable filter to capture microfibers that otherwise pass through water treatment plant filters and into water bodies. 
by 2021, fund proper solid waste management systems in indigenous and Arctic communities. Rescuing the Oceans This part of the platform is labeled with the sustainable development goals of climate action and life below water. The world's oceans are in trouble. Besides overfishing, seafood from the sea, pollution, acidification, climate change, habitat damage, and fishing gear are taking a terrible toll on marine life and ecosystems. Eight to nine million tons of plastic enter the ocean every year, the equivalent of one large garbage truck full of plastic every minute. This plastic ends up floating, submerged, or sinking to the ocean floor, often leaching and absorbing toxic chemicals, and harming and killing marine life through their entanglement or ingestion. In short, we have to clean up and back off and give marine ecosystems a chance to heal themselves. Turn off the pollution taps flowing into coastal waters, including municipal sewage and industrial effluents. Climate protection policies to prohibit new offshore oil and gas development and phase out existing operations will reduce the threat of marine oil spills. Slash fossil fuel use, see Mission Possible, to protect the ocean from acidification. Expand marine protected areas from 10 to 30% of Canada's territorial waters by 2030. Legislate cruise ship waste discharge standards that meet or exceed those of our coastal neighbors. To reduce and mitigate plastic waste from fishing gear that entangles and kills marine animals, by January 2021, implement an extended producer responsibility program for all companies making or selling synthetic fishing gear, which would fund the retrieval of lost or abandoned fishing gear, commonly known as ghost nets, and the collection and recycling of old, damaged, and recovered fishing gear. Protecting Species and Habitats this part of the platform is labeled with the sustainable development goal of life on land. Several hundred animal and plant species are currently on federal and provincial lists of species at risk of extinction, with more added every year. The most common cause of their decline is destruction of habitat due to economic activity and urbanization. Rarely are species removed from this list. Often their status continues to decline despite their protected status. Increase funding to federal departments to dramatically ramp up the development and implementation of endangered species recovery plans required by legislation, placing tight deadlines on completion and invoking emergency powers of the federal government to protect species when provincial governments fail to do so. Protect a minimum of 30% of freshwaters, oceans, and land by 2030. Commit $100 million annually over the next four years to create Indigenous-led protected and conserved areas and fund stewardship of these lands and waters by Indigenous guardians. Fully restore the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act, which was gutted by the Harper government in 2012, and adopt the recommendations of the Independent Expert Panel on Environmental Assessment commissioned by the Liberals, and then ignored. Increase funding to Parks Canada to ensure that the ecological integrity of our national parks is maintained and, where necessary, restored, and that heritage sites are fully protected and maintained. And that's it for this episode. Today we went over the green vision for invoking ecological wisdom. Now, to get the platform yourself, you can go to greenparty.ca slash platform. And to look up who your local Green Party candidate is, go to greenparty.ca slash candidates and put in your postal code. Thank you so much for your time. Once again, we'd love to hear from you. So please email us at platformpodcast2019 at gmail.com. If you have any platform questions or feedback, we'd love to hear from you. We'll read everything that you send us and do our best to reply as well. We're looking forward to being able to share some of these questions and feedback as well. So if you'd prefer we don't share your comments, please mention that in your message. Coming up next is episode seven, where we'll cover renewing the social contract. I'm Sean Yo, and thanks so much for joining us. See you next episode.